apologize for wasting all of your time. Okay, let's let Brian take over for a second. All right, yep, this is uh, November 15th. This is a finance committee meeting. Uh, in attendance is myself, uh, Councilperson and Committee Chair Brian Wolf. We have Councilpersons Shrimp and uh, Brueger in attendance, as well as Mayor Hughes uh, and Leah Klein and, and Kim Park Pulley. And I heard uh, Brian uh, Sutton as well. I just see him listed here as BBS, so but I'm pretty sure that's who that is, unless it's Barb. But in any case, that's who I see. Is it Barb? It's Barb. I thought I heard Brian. So I think he's in the background. I'm sure he's there. Okay. Well, then we have Barb uh, in the in the peanut gallery. Uh, very good. Then uh, the first agenda item that we wanted to discuss with you, Kim, uh, and probably the easiest one on the legislation before council is adding Juneteenth uh, as an observed holiday, and there were questions around the financial ramifications to the village uh, in doing so. Yes, so we talked with Chief Delp and um, on holidays, he tends to run instead of two officers per shift, um, assuming that there's nothing major going on. Um, he will only run one officer per shift because of the conscientiousness of the overtime. Um, so we kind of did a quick calculation based on Generally, it's the shift officers that's working. It's not the um, lieutenant and the sergeant, but we used a higher number just in case one of them were working. Um, and on average, we figured it to be about $1,080 per holiday in overtime. And so that's so that that is just overtime pay for those who are scheduled to work that day. So right. they would be getting the holiday pay regardless which that would be another, hold on one second, I gotta get my note here. Um, about another $1,000 um, to have the holiday pay. Yeah, so. Because the chief doesn't get the pay and the others who didn't work would get it. Right, so, 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 so the real Delta, the, the the total increase, if we just straight it added Juneteenth without any other adjustment, it's really about two thousand dollars net increase to police expenses. Correct. Okay. Mark, I heard you starting to chime in there. Did you have uh, something? I was else? gonna make the same point you just did. Okay. And Diane, did you have uh thoughts on that concerns was that outside of the range that you felt was reasonable to do this well the um well first of all well the other consideration then um is that the village which is normally served by two officers shift is is um actually you know not getting the same level of service which is a factor um, in any uh, holiday situation, I guess. But uh, the only, the, uh, what was uh, the, you know, the discussion was had where it was just not adding another holiday, but swapping out the President's Day, for example, or Juneteenth in order to honor the Ju Juneteenth as being more, a more important date to remember. So, where did that conversation go? I my recollection was that in general it just fell to the wayside uh, because adding Juneteenth uh, was fairly palatable at, at the at the expense. But if that doesn't feel like that's the case to either of you or both, then we can we can further that discussion. I think um, okay. This is so. Uh, I'll just say this. This is sort of this is obviously right now. This is my this is my last year on council, and um, I know that the city of Columbus and others have added an additional holiday to to uh, not all of the townships and villages have, but the other certainly the other larger cities have added Juneteenth, so they've added an additional holiday. 
So it goes along with that trend, I guess. But, you know, no matter, you've got it on the books and um, it'll be uh, harder to, I mean, in good times, you know, it's just harder to give things when it, when, when there's good times and it's harder to take it away when there's no longer good times. So, uh, you know, it is a permanent addition to the expense of the police department, uh, unless it's again, uh, voted back off. So I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm just a fiscal conservative that way. Um, and then the, but now the Juneteenth is also tied to the same legislation as it's something else, right? Uh, isn't that? It's all the handbook change, yeah. right? So the oh, other. See the part time, yeah. the 20 hours a yeah. week in the um, yep. college. Yep. So, so I, I didn't quite. I didn't quite feel like we came to a determination if we wanted to discuss further dropping a different holiday or just moving forward with that portion of that legislation. So as I understand things, the holiday, what makes a holiday a holiday? It's not like me or, you know, someone working at PNC where a holiday means you stay home from work. So it's not like extra days off for people per se. Well, it is. It is, though. It is for everybody who's not working. The, the not village working administration is not working. The village administration yeah. will be off, and the police chief um, will be off, and the, so, yeah. So, well, and then that makes this a little stickier, then, because I was going to say, looking at the list of holidays we have, if I was going to take a holiday off, it would be the day after Thanksgiving. But I don't know if that means then Leah's going to have to come in on the day after Thanksgiving because it's not a holiday. Right. And I don't necessarily want her to do that because, you know, that four day I have time to travel and see family, I think is nice. Right. But and that's why I, I think don't... President's Day is probably the most likely option if you're going to give one up because that's not one where people tend to travel and see family a lot. Do we, do, I don't have the list in front of me. Do we, do we still have Columbus Day on the list? We know no, that's when we gave no. up to get the day after Thanksgiving. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Because that, that'd be the first one I'd drop. But yes. you don't have that. So I mean, the rest of them are pretty hard to argue against. New Year's Day, President's Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, Martin Luther King Day, Memorial Day, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Those are kind of... Yeah. Those are kind of the biggies. We don't, we don't have a lot of... We're not, we're not giving anyone Arbor Day off. <laughs> but we should. Everybody so who, go plant who originally, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, who, who originally asked for the Juneteenth? I mean, who started that discussion? It wasn't council. I, I know that. It came from the administration somewhere. Well, we actually had residents asking about it, whether or not we were observing it last year. Um, but it was such a short notice when it came about. So it's just been an ongoing, do we do it or do we not? Because it's... Okay. Um, I think that there's residents in the village that would take notice if we did or didn't. Yeah, and I, I think it, it goes along with the resolution. It, it, <clears throat> it goes along. Something to call coming. I, I think it goes along with the resolution that we passed, uh, declaring the month of June, uh, you know, a month where we emphasize and celebrate diversity. This is just a, you know, putting putting a little more weight behind that proclamation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, and I, I, to be honest, I don't know that I have that big of an issue with the with the $2,000 price tag. No, me neither. I mean, out of the police's million dollar budget. Yeah, that's, it's a small, small drop in that. All right, so then let's move on to the other, the other portion of that, the same piece of legislation, which is extending uh, the offer of uh, health care insurance uh, to... Hold on, uh, Chair, um, because yeah. the same legislation is also the one that changes holiday pay to... Um, Part-time employees regularly scheduled to work 15 to 19.99 hours per week or more, supported by average work hours for the last four pay periods. Receiving the holiday shall receive three hours of holiday pay at his or her regular pay rates, 
Um, all part-time employees, regularly scheduled to work, blah, 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 blah. Gets okay, two stop. hours of their regularly. Stop. We fixed that. Um, we actually changed the legislation. And so that's an old one. I'm not sure if you guys got the new one. Um, the uh, only thing that the we- The most recent packet I'm looking at. So we have not got the new one. Okay. So somehow that packet did not get changed with the updated version. Okay. The updated version is this, um, which was in the last one. Um, for the last okay. meeting. It is supposed to be just the original handbook said 20 hours or more would receive four hours in pay. That is what the old handbook says. Okay. okay. The change would say instead of 20, it will say 10. That is the only change that is being made. So, but how does that change? Um, we have some that work 10. We have some that work 15. We have some that work 20 or more. Um, for example, and I'm just going to say it, and this is not why we're doing it, but I mean, we have, obviously we have maintenance people. We have, um, Eric, we have a couple different part-time people. We also have police, uh, a police officer that's part-time. And I'm going to tell you that the part-time police officer would not qualify for this right now. Um, but for Eric, Eric used to work an average of 20 ish plus hours. Um, since MI Holmes is done, he definitely works somewhere between like 10, 15 hours a week. So he would qualify for something like this. Maintenance in the winter time, same thing. Maintenance right now, they're averaging 30 hours a week or 26 hours a week or whatever it is. But once we get to the winter time, he may only be averaging 12, 15 hours a week. So it's those types of things that, you know, we don't want employees sitting at work for 20 hours just to get the holiday pay. Um, we want them to work what they're supposed to be working. And, you know, that's just one of the benefits. So the difference is, um, the 20 changed to 10 and that's all that we've changed. So we were right. going to do it on a sliding scale. Yes, that was accurate. And then we thought that's a nightmare for Kim. That's a, or that's a nightmare for Leah to try to figure out. So we just thought, you know what, it's so minimal because we only, we are only talking somewhere between <laughs> one and four probably employees ever. Okay, and so we did add the we word, have... we did add the words, no seasonal. Well, now that we have that, um, do we want to talk about what our thoughts on that are, Diane and Ryan? Are we okay with giving extending part-time pay down to people who are really part-time for the, you know, and it'd be, it would be three hours or four hours? We went ahead and put four hours in there because I think everybody was like three versus four. Really, what's the difference? We're talking, you know, fourteen dollars an hour, eighteen dollars, whatever. You know, I don't know what all of them make, but off the top of my head, um, well, yeah, I didn't want to bog us down. But before we moved on, we should address exactly. the second so half of the. Uh, the quick answer is in the legislation that is currently at the office that was not in there says four. But if you okay. guys, I mean, yeah. we will be sending out a new packet tomorrow morning. Um, but that's what this meeting, in my opinion, that is why I'm here. And that's what this meeting is for. If this committee comes up with three, we're going to put three. If you guys come up with four, we'll leave it as four. Awesome. So let's get on to our discussion on that then. Yeah, I am. A, I am okay extending the holiday pay to uh, the, you know, more part time all the way down to averaging $10 an hour. I think that it is the kind of thing that goes a long way to showing the village's good faith and dedication to their part-time, to our part-time employees, uh, which even for whatever number of dollars it's going to be, which we don't have an expectation that this is going to be a lot of dollars, is still a good faith movement to say, hi, part-time employee, we, we will care for you in a manner that is good for you. That's what I have to say. Um, I, 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 uh, I am, uh, I, I guess I'm okay with it as long as, it, again, as long as this is a really kind of a, a very special custom wackadoodle thing to do, but, but it is a small village. So as long as it passes HR muster, or HR law, as long as it passes that and there's no gotchas in there uh, that they can see, then I'm, a, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. And we also have one more question. Would this take effect next calendar year or this calendar year? That was one of the things we were wondering before the meeting. 
that's that's more of a Kim question. Kim, what were you expecting as far as budget goes, or will that affect it? Because I think I mean, it's not going to affect it that much, but it'd be nice if the handbook. I mean, historically, if we've made changes to the handbook, we've tried to do it like at the beginning of the calendar year or like July 1st so that it's like a reasonable time. So um, that's kind well, of expected and set. Uh, so, so yeah, what we would do earlier thing, then we don't need to necessarily waive readings if we're just looking for this to take effect in January. And that's a council decision. I have, I, I'm not going to fight for anything. What we would do is take out emergency legislation and just do the three readings because that would put it to, well, if we started it January 1st, we would still want to pass it as an emergency. So how would that work, Kim? Because we have all the holidays at the end of the year, but then January 1st. January 1st is a holiday. So that could be the first holiday that it takes effect for. Right, but, but we are we we're also emergency. not hold on we're not changing whether or not january 1st is a holiday for the village no, no, no. right it's just whether or not so we can write the people will get the yeah yeah so we can uh okay so whether the part-time people get yeah. it <sighs> and now you're if you want to extend it for january 1st okay so i think that we should uh mm. yeah that's a tough one uh, we should we should intend it to start effective the first so that they get their the you know the the part or time people get get their holiday pay and we'll just have to either pass as an emergency on December at the one meeting in December or hold a yeah that's what we'll have to do because yeah. I think if you don't pass it as an emergency on December fourteenth I'd have to double check but you could catch two holidays in there if you wait the thirty days because. Martin Luther King Day right. is in January also. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we should we should just look to pass it as an emergency in December. Yeah, but I don't think we necessarily have to waive readings, which we might not be able to do nope. tomorrow due to a lack of council members. Okay. Right. So we'll fix that legislation it, for you guys tomorrow. Now three versus four. Is there a strong feeling of one or the other or leave it as four? I'm fine with four. Okay. Four is okay by me. It's what we do now anyway. This is just including that to some people who might not have hit it before. And as you mentioned, there's not very many of those who weren't included before that will be because of this change. We'll make sure it's in the packet the correct way and I'll make sure that and we'll make sure that the packet gets out tomorrow morning just so you guys can see any of the updates in it. All right. Was was that also the same one that has the changes in the pay rates for the police? So no, no that's not. the only thing in the handbook. So the pay ranges. Um, if you guys want to switch over to that real quick, Kim, the pay ranges. The only yep. change to the pay ranges was the top tier did not change in the pay ranges. The only one that changed was the chief of police, and that was for the three percent raise. The lower pay range went right, up so because we're not. Is Go ahead. Yeah, I think Diane wanted the numbers. Yes. She specifically asked, what was the old number and what are the new numbers? The top range of the chief of police was 77 and now it's 78. Um, because if he gets a 3% raise, he'll be just over 77. It's like 77.50 or something. It's like just right there. And I'm looking at the legislation. It doesn't have his pay listed. It's at the bottom. Oh. Under the salary. I was looking at, <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, I was looking at the, yeah, the top. I apologize for interrupting. Please continue. Okay. No, you're um, fine. And if you the only the other change, I'm pretty sure, was the um, police officer rate. The base, the low end went from 23 to 24. But the high rate did not change. Correct. Correct. So the new, uh, I guess there's, uh, I can't remember. Uh, I think Chief Tilt told me once how he did this, but I think after the six month probation, they kind of bumped the salary a little bit. So, um, um, so if they're new, they actually, their starting is 75 cents less than the base. That's right. Yeah, I know we had this conversation. When, when's the time, Kim, we had that? 
Um, and I think that might be toward uh, underneath the salaries there too, in the language and the resolution for the ordinance. So you have uh, had to adjust the budget for that, right? Actually, we didn't um, because um, the turnover that we had this past year in the police department, um, those people who left, and we had a gap between the time Lieutenant Doran retired versus the time Lieutenant Phillips started. Um, so those two things combined, um, that budget number for 2022 actually did not change from what it had been forecasted to be. But you have, okay, but you, so the, the officers that, I know there was one more that was hoping to hire, I assume that one will be hired at 24 or at some point will be bumped to 24 if the, if he hires someone tomorrow and right now, right now the, he has to, he's doing 23 uh, minus 75 cents. Right? Okay, hang on. Assuming that the officers that are coming in are starting at the lowest point is not accurate. So a lot of times, and maybe I'm gonna speak where I shouldn't be speaking and Leah and Kim, you guys may. When an officer is hired, they are hired in at different points in their career. Um, so there are different tiers in which they're hired in. So just because an officer is hired in does not mean that they're anywhere near the 24, 25. Um, they're, they're hired in at the level of service and all of that that they've, that they've accomplished throughout their careers. So we right. don't have a lot of brand new officers right off the street that have come in. So I'm just trying to make that a point. So don't assume that just because we went from 23 to 24, um, we don't actually have officers that were making $23 an hour, just as an FYI. Most of them are hired in at a higher rate because they've been officers for a long time. Okay, so Kim, you just um, kind of um, look at the police department where it's at and use your gut to say it's probably gonna be about there next year. And that's a budget number I, you can Oh, get. Diane, I have a whole spreadsheet. <laughs> You should know better. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's using historical exactly. figures and. Uh, um, no, good, I'm good taking metrics. what what their pay rates are right now, and then I'm projecting them out into next year. So, for my 2022 number originally, I was using 2021 pay ranges, bumping everybody by a percentage. So, if we have an officer who left and hire an officer in that's not making as much, um. I think 533,000 was what 2022 had been projected at in the five-year forecast, even back in the summer, based on the current officers we had working. Well, with some of them leaving and bringing in lower paid officers and having kind of a gap in some service, um, it's still at 533 for next year. So even though um, we've had all that turnover and even though we're increasing that base a little bit, there's not been a change to the actual budget that was projected. Okay. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate the detail. Okay, all right, check that one off the list. And now uh, on to uh, the financial impact of uh, expanding our offering of healthcare to part-time employees. What are, we, what, are we, what are we looking at as the, the potential impact? Um, so if, we only currently have one part-time employee who would qualify for this right now. Mm -hmm. Well, two technically, but we already know one is not um, interested in taking it. Um, so this would affect one part-time employee. If we're requiring them to pay 50%, then the impact to us is about $4,200 a year. Okay. That seems... And it would be approximately $4,200 if we had a second one who right. became available, yep. it would be $4,200 for each one that may join on. Right. It's approximately and, $350 a month yep. for 12 months. And so the village has approximately how many part-time employees? I heard one officer. And um, right now, because we have that qualification in there that it's a 20 hour per week, um, mm -hmm. it only affects two right now. So at a maximum of uh, $8,400 a year with our current staffing. I think that is a reasonable thing uh, to, again, put, put out there into the world that when Minerva Park is hiring a part-time person, we care that we are trying to do our best by our people. 
that we are, you know, offering maybe not always, you know, the most dollars, but an environment that may provide other things for them. I, 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 I personally like this. And just um, a follow-up to something that Diane had asked earlier, and Kim and Leah are more than welcome to chime in on this, but this has gone through um, Frost Brown Top. Is that accurate to say, Kim? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He said there's a delicate balance between um, not wanting to have different tiers for different compensated employees and the IRS wanting as many people as possible to be covered by health insurance. Um, however, what kicked us into being able to do it is um, we don't have any of what the IRS considers a highly compensated employee, which is over $130,000 a year. So because of that, that's really what they're worried about is are you offering your highly compensated employees a different package than you're offering everybody else? And since we don't have any highly compensated employees, then we're free to do pretty much whatever we wanted to do here. Excellent. And has that potential extra expense been accounted for in the 2022 budget? Uh, um, it was not um, because I wasn't sure that that's where we were going to go. Um, mm -hmm. But that's a quick ad and could take, I can have it for the packet tomorrow. Yeah. And as a net change, it's, we're not talking, I mean, that's, is that even 1% of the budget, 2%? I say not even. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we did put in there too that you have to, we are requiring that this won't affect the employees that we have because they've all been here for longer than a year anyway. Um, right. but we are putting in there that that's not effective until after 90 days after employment because we don't want somebody coming in. Like we want to be balanced about this, right? We don't want somebody yeah. coming in and being like, I need a bunch of medical work and being here for two weeks and then taking advantage of the insurance and then leaving. So that's pretty, that's, that's, Besides which, the paperwork takes mm -hmm. so long to do, and it's like, these days it's so arduous that it it doesn't make any sense. I agree. Yep. But I'm have Does, a little bit of skin in the game first. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody from this committee have concerns regarding regarding that that we need to discuss further? No, I just think that like what Kim said, if uh, you know, the rules about this type of insurance do change. And uh, as long as it's looked at on an annual basis, then mm -hmm. uh, to this, this year, it, the, the 2022, it'll work. And just have to pay attention to that special rule that's been created to make sure that uh, it remains that way. Right. As long as there's no changes at the federal level, we should, because as you can see by our salary, I think we're nowhere near close to having highly compensated employees for the IRS. Right. So you, you never know, though. Hey, I mean, <laughs> If you guys want to offer, I'll, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay. All right. All right, and then Diane, I think you'd said you had one other item that you were looking for details on, if I recall. Well, I was just uh, wondering, uh, Kim, uh, we didn't get a new budget document, so uh, does that mean that it hasn't changed since the last time, since you sent it to us? The only thing that will change that you will see tomorrow from the last legislation is um, this that we just talked about, the $4,200. And you will see, um, we talked about putting in the $7,500 for the pool. That was not in the yeah. one that was in there last time, but it will be this time. Okay. Everything else is the same. $7,500 for the pool, okay. So okay. we, I'm oh, sorry. No, I, I was just gonna ask a quick question only because I don't remember and it's not in front of me. Are we, pa we are passing on December 14th, the health insurance as an emergency, correct? Is that right? Yes, because it would go into effect yeah. January, 1st. January 1st. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, because again, the part-time person, I just want to make sure we've got them covered the first. Yep. Awesome. Okay, and then we, we still do have the uh, last work session. Uh, should someone come up with something that they think we should put in the budget for next year? True. True. Yeah, because we're not we're not passing that tomorrow night either. We'll have we'll have one more conversation about it. Okay. And that All one right. doesn't have to be passed as any kind of emergency because it's a appropriation, so it'll go into effect immediately. Correct. All right. Does anybody else have any other items that they were looking to discuss in this uh, in this committee meeting?
If oh, not, uh, I, I did have, uh, Kim, where do you put the, um, where does the uh, contribution to the MPCA for the carriage rides, where does that show up in the budget? It is in here. Mayor's community expense, I believe. It's under community environment. Um, it's part of the either supplies and materials for community other community environment. It says lakes on there, um, but it's I'm taking that out because it's not just lakes. It's anything that's not planning and zoning that's related to the community as a whole. Community environment. Yes, under community environment, there is planning and zoning, and then there's other community environment. Okay, thank you. So it's, that's not everything. I mean, that whole thing is not MPCA, but it well, is in that number. Okay, yeah. Uh, I again, I, I'm not looking. I didn't. I didn't call it up. I thought maybe we were going to get one's uh, budget, so I didn't go get mine. Sorry, but um, I'll look at that. But I, I, would I can share my screen if that would help. I, I will. Uh, well, I didn't. I would not have assumed if uh, it was MPCA. That would be a surprise. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but. Uh, so I'm glad to hear it's not, but you know. Yes, that's some other generic supplies that might be needed for those like mulch and for like the, um, not around the community building, but like the other beds around the village and those types of things. Sounds like it's kind of a potpourri. <laughs> if you will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So we'll try it again. Anybody else got anything else? Um, I was kind of playing around with some numbers around over the weekend. If okay. we go forward with the um, the building being paid for through TIF revenue, which I would encourage if it's possible, because I just I like to have that flexibility if something were to happen to the village and we need. To some, for some reason, issue debt on an emergency basis. And paying for the village or paying for the building would kind of, it would really limit that flexibility. Um, however, if we did that, depending on the cost to replace the pool, taking the debt payment out of the general fund and having it be part of the TIF, it's, I would say, 75 to 90% likely that we would be able to pay to replace the pool if we can get some kind of matching grant without having to take debt. Okay, sounds. So sounds just another good. thought to consider as far as the TIF itself. But yeah, as and far that's as part of the conversation that, that we should be having with the financial advisors that we're looking to engage, right? That's all, it's all yeah. part of that conversation. Yes. And I know we what? talked at one point about doing the pool as part of it, but I think yeah. that, we could do it without having to do debt at all if we went uh, that route with the building. Got it. I see what you're saying. That by taking the bill, by by doing the building with TIF financing, it would open up re revenue in the general general fund to just exactly. do the pool outright. Exactly. And then start that, like we talked about the last month, um, start setting aside like $15,000 a year to replace it. it in the future. All right. Well, that sounds... That does sound good. We can, uh, we will probably come back around on that in January because unless anybody else has anything else, uh, I am looking to bring this meeting to an end. Anyone going once? Going twice? All right, then uh, unless there is an emergent need, we probably won't meet as a finance committee again until January. Uh, but thank you everybody for a wonderful Wonderful year in the Finance Committee, and I will bring this session to an end. Thank we you. Are adjourned. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, guys.